but um, I, I think That's it's true. like Harry, like Harry Spotter, the boy who lifted, or something along those lines. It's it's crazy. <laughs> When um, my little daughter was, and, and my son as well, was um, dressing up in kind of magician stuff, we called him like mm. Harry Potter because he's a little bit chubby yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, was when I first okay. heard about the whole um, structure of Majora's Mask and how it's actually that Link is dead and then he's going through the five stages of grief or something like that. It's heartwarming. It's a heartwarming game. I mean, there are a few references. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, I still cannot get over the glowing of go-go's and how many times they're talking yeah. about glowing of go-go's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah, they were never playable in the 360 version. So, yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, I, le I learned something new there. <laughs> yeah, and if the worst comes to the worst, I'll just have to buy a plane. Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Miyazaki Man podcast and today's guest, very special guest indeed, my fellow Brit the Kaseki Nut. Episode 1 was an absolute banger and he's back in style. He tells you all about the Trails series, which OST, which game he would take on a desert island, his adventures in Japan, his YouTube creating journey. So much good banter in this episode, you're not going to want to miss it. An RPG legend, in fact he's on my personal Mount Rushmore, one of the best RPG creators ever. These top three, the Kaseki Nut. And speaking of Mount Rushmore, I'm developing my own YouTube library of my favourite YouTubers and this pulls in data around their most popular video ever, their latest releases and behind the scenes of the creators themselves. I'm hoping to build out this platform ready for next year. Keep an eye out on it on MS Inevitable. Work in progress but we're getting there. Orbology rocks as well. Check it out. Life in Japan with the Miyazaki Man podcast. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Miyazaki Man podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by my guest again for part two, the Kaseki Nut. How are you doing my man? How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Like I say, you're going to have to forgive me because like, I am a bit out of it at the moment. But, uh, you know, that's the bank holiday weekend in a nutshell right there. Absolutely. Big up uh, King Charles giving us an extra free day. Us Brits got to love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, King. I didn't watch your coronation, though. So, you know, <laughs> I was doing something else. Yeah, we appreciate the day nonetheless. But no, absolutely. Last time where we left off, you're going to go away and think about if you had one OST soundtrack from any game ever on an island, which soundtrack would you take, listen to over and over again, never get bored of it? East 8, like, it's not, yeah. it, it's not even close, I mean, like, as soon as you said it, I knew which one it was going to be, um, Lacrimosa Adana has probably about 10 songs, which I would listen to on repeat, on my Spotify list, so, that alone would be enough, and I mean, it encapsulates the whole idea of being on a desert island as well, so, I mean, yeah. at least I'd feel like I'm, you know, matching the theme of my situation, to so to speak. <laughs> absolutely absolutely is it one of those tracks like say you're working hard on a project and when you want to kick back and when you need to groove up in the gym you can listen to any track from that that game and it just hypes you up pretty much yeah i mean like i always listen to stuff like um like sunshine coastline or something like that when i'm working out and whatnot like mm. that that kind of stuff always just pumps me up uh whatever it is i don't know what it is maybe the fast-paced action like the guitar and all that kind of stuff and there's there's loads of other songs in there that get me going too so yeah i, ca I can't say anything bad about that ost it's a shame because the osts seem to be going down in quality lately for falcon but uh, that one is peak for me so yeah, makes sense, makes sense to me. Yeah, the other favourite amongst uh, uh, the RPG crowd is stuff like uh, Chrono Cross, you know, the archipelago mm. kind of tropical theme. And, yeah. Uh, all those old school ones, yeah, they absolute genius, absolute genius. And in terms yeah. of kind of your RPG channel as well, what would you say are the kind of the main RPG topics or main RPG types of videos you make and which are the ones of the RPG topics that you tend to avoid and you don't really make on your channel? uh so topics that i'll normally cover like generally speaking i'll just make anything that i feel that i want to or anything that i feel is going to be <laughs> enjoyable any, anything that's just going to be you know enjoyable to watch so for example the like the um the short jrpgs video because i think that that's going to be useful for a lot of people mm. and i i like yeah. compiling stuff stuff like that together as well and putting it into an entertaining format stuff that i don't really cover is anything controversial or anything like that i'm not really big on you know talking mm. about politics or anything that kind of stuff that's not really what my channel's about i prefer like celebrating rpgs and all this kind of stuff so like i say i mean yeah. i'm not too dependent on my channel so i just make whatever i want mm -hmm. and if it, sure. um, the added bonus is that people sometimes watch watch it quite a lot so that's that's good for me but um i'm not going to just yeah. go after i'm not going to go after something that is you know 
sub something that I don't want to do because I'm pretty certain viewers will know it's something I don't want to do when they watch it because it'll be pretty clear in my voice. It'll be it'll be clear, clear in my voice. It'll be clear in the editing. It'll be clear in my actions, and they'll be like, ah, okay, then he's he's just doing this because he has to rather than because he wants to. That's not really what I want to show. Exactly, exactly. You got to do something you're passionate about, otherwise you quickly burn out, and you can tell the enthusiasm's not there, the effort's not there. And I guess because like you're established already and you've got a following, right? what you like and what you're passionate about is probably likely what your fans will like as well, right? So you know that it kind of uh, caters to each other. Yeah, to a point, to a point. Um, there are, uh, like I say, I mean, obviously some videos, do be some videos do better than others and stuff like that. Some appeal to more than others and whatnot. But uh, the, the, po the point is, the main thing for me is that I enjoy what I'm doing because if I don't enjoy what I'm doing, then I stop yeah. recording. So what, what um, you know, sure. what's the point in doing stuff that I really don't have any sort of passion for because that just leads to burnout. Not really what I want to do. So that'll be, that's pretty much it for me. That's my simple yet effective philosophy that works for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that, that is absolutely key. Having that philosophy and, and sticking to it. So for example, I see a lot of uh, upcoming channels trying to cover RPGs, trying to cover games and whatnot, game reviews, but um, how, how do they stand out away from the crowd? Because obviously there's quite an established, you know, community already established creators. What would they need to do differently apart from things they're passionate about to, you know, really make a name for themselves or get a strong footing as a, as a YouTube content creator? Um, it's tough, really. I, I don't feel like I should be giving advice anyway, because I'm not exactly massive myself. But <laughs> um, um, the I would say the main thing is character, like actually allowing yourself mm. to stand out. Like there are some, like there are some people who will like to emulate what others do or what is successful. But in my opinion, they should be showing their actual character, showing what they're all about, because that's ultimately what people sign up for in the long term they sign up for the personality they sign up for the person right. rather than what they put out and i think that's the main thing you need to show what you're all about if you're a jolly person great if you're a monotone person great and then showing that you embrace that you're going to find people i mean there are what seven billion over seven billion people in the world you're going to find some people <laughs> who will resonate with you i think that's the main thing sure um definitely finding your own um spot so to speak in terms of how you conduct yourself and then maybe just stuff like gradually improving over time as well, gradually improving your um, your editing process or something like that. So maybe adding a te different technique in every single one and then refining it over time. Mm. So showing that you're learning uh, as you go. So for example, I mean, I look at some of my older videos and I cringe at them because I'm just thinking that was absolutely <laughs> dreadful. The sound quality was terrible. Everything was terrible. And, there, and I dare say in about another five years, I'll look back on the videos I'm doing now and cringe at them as well because like I might have improved quite a bit up from that point. So sure. I think that's the point that you're never really the finished article as well. You're always looking to um, push yourself to, to newer heights and then go from there. And that's it really makes sense yeah no makes sense to me of course you want people to be a fan of you rather than just covering a hype series and then following because you know they're thinking you're doing a popular series you rather than be a fan of you and follow you no matter what you do so that personality thing kind of really resonates and, and comes through as well so on on that kind of regard when you make a video what is your um preference between putting audio in the background when you're doing some kind of game review or just trying to like maximize the quality of your audio and your kind of review and, and your speaking would you be a fan of the backing track or would you rather just your words telling the story um it depends normally i always go for backing music because it sets the tone i think that backing music is very important for any video you do uh, for example news videos i try to keep it calm and cool whereas with with review videos i like to keep it specific to the section that i'm covering so for example radiant historia i just did a video on that so for the combat yeah. section i have the combat music in the background i feel like it sets the tone it sets the theme of what i'm talking about and I, to be honest like mm -hmm. th there are times like there are times when you don't need music because there's a there are times mm -hmm. when it just feels right and that can be really effective in my mind but in my mind you also you do need to have music music is just so important for the flow the and how a yeah. mute, how a video comes out i don't think there's many videos out there outside of maybe commentary channels that have like virtually no music in the background that are still entertaining mm. like you need something there especially for rpg videos because oh, rpgs yeah. have mm -hmm. such good um music anyway why waste it so uh, 
I, I think yeah, I think yeah. it's I, I try to make sure that I always put music in the background at, at, at certain points like there are points where I'll just omit it completely but I'll kind of put it together in some sort of amalgamation that works for me keeps the flow going yeah no makes sense mm. to me makes sense to me and in terms of the kind of the old school kind of rpgs and and what you're you're a fan of what game or what series would you say that have, doesn't have a high chance of coming out but you would absolutely you know scream out loud if tomorrow they announced the next installment of this particular franchise or this particular series it's being released end of this year what is that series for you that you think people aren't looking at it's not on people's radar but they just announced it and wow you know the fan girl and you screams out that's a, that's a tough one because like the thing is that i i haven't played many of the retro games or anything like that i'm more a modern rpg yeah. fan than anything else um oh, okay. but if it was gonna be anything oh it's a, it's, it's a tough one because a lot of the ones that i like have sequels coming out but um i'd, prob <laughs> I'd probably say so i'm trying to mull it over in my head um can't not legend of hero it wouldn't be legend it wouldn't be trails it wouldn't be east because east 10 is coming out right at the end of the year um yeah. probably tokyo xanadu just to give you um probably tokyo, tokyo xanadu yeah mm -hmm. tokyo xanadu yeah because tokyo xanadu just seems to be have been completely forgotten by falcon completely forgotten by fans sure. it gets overshadowed because it's not trails and it's not east um but it's such good game and xanadu as like a series has gone on well before tokyo xanadu anyway um i think that lately the, the company did express a desire to get back into Tokyo Xanadu in the future. Some of their new, newer staff want to get involved in it. They're bringing it to Switch now as well. And there was a little teaser with the uh, the shop exclusive that you get from Falcom that, um, that yeah. there's like two new characters or something like that or two silhouettes we've never really seen before. And it looks okay. like... It, I don't, don't know if that's going to lead to maybe a... Um, don't know if that's going to lead to say a mobile game and to be honest i'm expecting that or it might lead to something completely yeah. new i'm hoping it's something completely new like a direct sequel to tokyo xanadu but if it that that's oh, definitely yeah. something i would be very happy with if it does come out i mean it was one of the first games i ever covered on the channel as well so it's kind of like a bit nostalgic for me there as well makes sense makes sense to me yeah no i remember the video back in the day i was still watching your stuff back then as well so oh, yeah. i can tell you're passionate <laughs> about it and um, I, I was just thinking right i was just thinking as you were talking off the top of my head because there's an obvious one for me right it's genzo Strakuden 6 because mm. obviously the series was on a kind of back burner mm. until they konami saw the oh, success no. of the kickstarter of aiden Aiden Chronicles, and then they're like, we got to get oh, into this. Yeah. So the HD remake of Genzo Suikuden is coming out, but Suikuden 6, I've even made a channel dedicated right. just to get the awareness back in there. Once they make that, oh my God, I'll be, you know, mind blown. I know it's probably going to be based on the success of the uh... HD remake and the other remakes. And then actually one game that just came to mind that um, really I think I'd be quite hyped for is, you remember back in the day, Final Fantasy Versus 13? I am sorry, mate. I think my my internet cut out there for a second. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I've got I've got like a um, no, the frozen one of you is gone. Excellent. Okay, how much did you hear before it cut out? Uh, it got to the part where you were talking about uh, Genzo's uh, Suikoden, and then uh, and then it just cut off immediately after that. So we'll go from there, I guess. Absolutely, sounds good to me. Yeah. So Genzo's Suikoden Six. Oh my god, I would absolutely fan go out loud if they suddenly announced it because based on the success of the Kickstarter of Aiden Chronicles, you know, it's kicked them into action. HD remake, mm. uh, orchestra. I'm actually going to Tokyo um, in three weeks' time for the next mm. uh, exclusive concert they're doing of that game. So mm. that would be like really, really cool. But it's just come to my mind while you were talking, right? One game. Like, the reason I haven't played Final Fantasy 15 is, do you remember back in the day, Final Fantasy versus 13? The official now final, fa final fantasy Stella. versus 13 to a point is that is that like the dissidia title or something like that it's um it, it like so yeah it was like it was the original the original concept of final fantasy 15 it was like noctis and it had this girl called stella the blonde long yep. blonde -haired, haired girl called stella who could yeah. summon weapons and it's kind of like a romeo and juliet really kind of dark really kind of macabre themed um final fantasy and then they changed the direction of it completely canned stella and it made this um summoner called luna Freya or something who's not even involved in hmm. 15 much and they completely botched and killed that direction so that original dark really moody grimy final fantasy 15 um that would have been amazing but not what hmm. we actually got so that if they actually no. redid that properly or oh, that would be sick 
No, I, I, I will be honest, like, Final Fantasy XV is one that I, I never even finished. Like, I heard that it's got a bunch of expansions or something like that. I, I have no idea yeah. how it goes or anything like that, and I've had no desire to go back to it either. I was kind of burnt out on <laughs> 13, I was burnt out on 13 and 15. Um, I played uh, 14 yeah. for a long time, obviously, the MMO, that was really good. Um, oh. And I'm still still playing it now to a point. Like, only, not, not as much as I used to. Oh, really? But, um, oh. I'll play it when... Um, yeah. I'll, I'll play it when it's you know there's new content out and stuff like that or a new expansion to like just see how the story plays out um but 16 i will definitely play if i get myself a ps5 so um you know that 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 does look interesting and it does look some look like something that'll be interesting to me i know that some people aren't too big on the, with the, how the combat's going and stuff like that but I think it looks. I think it looks great, even if you take away the turn-based combat. I, I don't really have a preference between the two anyway, whether it be action-based or turn-based. Mm. As long as it's fun, that's all I care about. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You're you're completely right. You know what? When I when I saw sixteen, I was like, this might be a, a kind of throwback to a really really good classical Final Fantasy that really feels like a Final mm. Fantasy, and it's kind of in that uh, archaic kind of classic age, you know, as Brits, we, we know that kind of uh, the mm. territory that it's, it's kind of set in, and I feel as though the story is going to be really cool, and it's going to be twists and turns, and it's one that I'm actually looking forward to quite a lot. Yeah, definitely, yeah, I'm, I, I am looking forward to it, like, in terms of the trailers I saw, I think there was a state of play which had, like, about 20-odd minutes dedicated to showing mm. what it was all about, it just looked really good. So um, the, the only downside at the moment is that it's PS5 exclusive, so hopefully it will come to PC or something like that in the future. Um, and that Square can get their nice. PC port right, because, yeah, they're not very good with that stuff either. But um, that that's the yeah. that would be the ideal scenario if they do that. And I think it's not, ju it's not just Final Fantasy sixteen. Obviously, there's Rebirth as well, isn't there? Rebirth, um, mm. some are touting that's it right. for coming out this year too, but maybe you'll probably be coming out early next year who knows haven't heard much more about that so they got a lot going on <laughs> it's true it's true and um one one concept that ash had a really really good idea for and i don't know why it hasn't been done more often what do you think of if they remade some of the biggest most popular rpgs ever from the perspective of another character so for example chrono trigger from magus's perspective or for me genzo spaguden in joey joey's um perspective you know the whole retelling of the whole story from one of the other sides of the coin other perspectives um well i think some games actually do that um near automata for example does the whole 2b mm. route and then a 9s route and stuff like that and it kind of goes yeah. in one um one um it combines into one big one and near replicant does mm. something fairly similar as well not not to the level that uh, automata does but you know it does it um yeah if there if there was a game though that was just completely like that like a completely different um from a completely different perspective i mean How like for, 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 so you, you revisit the areas that the main character chrono yeah. visits but obviously when magus comes across him <laughs> yeah i think i think it did definitely work i mean like the the, the main thing in my head is that it, the, the world has to be rich enough the world has to be big enough to warrant it to happen i'm trying to think of mm. what games could make it happen in in light of that um like it it's definitely it's definitely a cool concept and i think it could work and i and like i say i've seen it happen before in other games yeah. in in stuff like near um so it can definitely work oh, yeah. it's as long as they as long yeah. as long as they're not really? retreading as long as they're not retreading massively, mm. I think, like, for example, um, Final Fantasy IV mm. The After Years basically just retreaded the whole game from the original, and mm. it was terrible. But, um, you know, as long as they don't yeah, do something yeah, like that, yeah, and they yeah. actually make it worth the player's time to see that perspective to add to one big story. Extra content, um, maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Tales of Zillia did it to a point as well, I think, with the cross-branching with the mm -hmm. two different characters. Star Ocean did it to a point. Star Ocean 6 and Star mm -hmm. Ocean 3, I think. They had different perspectives and whatnot, like dual protagonist features. So, yeah, and and well there is a game coming out in summer as well which also does it to a point that does it from different perspectives uh which i'm personally looking forward to i think a lot of people are looking forward to it as well yeah. um i won't name it but um i'm pretty certain some people if they watch it they'll have an idea they'll go summer the guys like the channel name and go oh okay yeah i know what he's talking about 
Um, so <laughs> that's um, that that's going to be interesting. So so yeah, it, it works. It works. I think the only problem is is that like um, you know you need to have how can I say the cred the credibility or the foundation to actually do it because yeah if you don't mm. it, it just comes off as you know needless padding could be could be yeah like h how well was dirge of cerberus received the the vincent um valentine kind of spin-off dirge of cerberus i honestly don't know i honestly don't know i never like um that, that's part of the final fantasy S 7 universe is it is it is it part of the seven yeah. it's part of the seven I universe so. yeah i don't think i ever i ever got involved with dirge of cerberus the only ones i did were like crisis core um the mm. remake and then um oh yeah yeah ad, ad, and then advent children which was the film like the adaptation yeah. or whatever it was sure. um those are the only three i look those are the only three i did i never looked at dirge of cerberus um i don't know if that was received well if, or if uh, people were just a bit over it by that point but you know maybe <laughs> maybe be worth checking out who knows yeah no indeed indeed and in terms of like the upcoming kind of games 2023 looks absolutely stacked especially with the kind of hd 2d kind of remakes and the the kind of um big fanboying of, of those retro games coming coming out yeah. again the, the final fantasy pixel um and all, all the remasters as well mm. what about like an a continuation of a game that didn't quite end properly so i'm thinking like xeno gears right they kind of ran out of budget on on the final disc and kind of you know just went with it what if they redid the thing and gave it proper due attention to fill in all of those kind of plot holes and and, and twists and whatnot and you know did a proper effort what do you think if they took those original games and just extended them to its proper conclusion rather than the way it normally ended I think that would be good, yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't played Xenogears, uh, Xenogears yet. Um, it's actually on my list of retro games to play. I'm waiting for the patrons to basically decide sure. that they want me to play it <laughs> because basically, like, the, yeah. the last mm -hmm. one they wanted me to do was uh, Radiant Historia, which I've just done. Going to put another vote, a poll up today for them to basically choose what, what the next one's going to be, and that's that's randomly generated mm -hmm. anyway, so Xenogears might not even appear on the list again. But um, I do know, like, after I did a retrospective on Chronicles last year, I know what happened with Gears and that disc two was basically oh, just oh. A, a compromise because I think Squaresoft at the yes. time had their two year development cycles. Um, the project was too ambitious. So they basically forced them to get it out. Takahashi and the team basically said, okay, we don't want it to end abruptly. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this disc, disc two, which basically plays out kind of like a, a visual novel. Um, and yeah, some people like mm -hmm. it. Some people like that style, but when you had such a good disc one and then that's how it ended with disc two. Yeah. I exactly. think it would be great mm -hmm. to have it remade. The, the, the real problem is the logistics side of it, because obviously Squaresoft are the one, well, Square are the ones who hold the rights to it. And I don't know if Takahashi and or right. Monolith Soft and Square are ever going to really see eye to eye about it. The, 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 the more <laughs> likely one would be, the more likely one would be Xenosaga. Um, because the original concept okay. of Xenosaga yeah, was sure. to make it a six, uh, was to make it a six game series rather than just the three that they ended up Episode, with, because yeah. that was, that was more a case of they didn't have the experience. They didn't have the, the manpower, sure. the resources and all that kind of stuff. I think Xenosaga could be really mm -hmm. good if they remade. And I think, again, there's rumors going around, like there was something in the Probably. Xenoblade Chronicles free future redeemed, um, credits or something like that, or the code, which referenced Xenosaga. Yeah um so whether Easter that actually yeah, yeah. yeah whether that actually materializes into anything would be great um because i would love to see xenosaga remade i mean like it's it, it like it's a game again that i haven't really got around to playing but i love the idea behind it i love like what they were going for so I, i'm personally looking forward to just playing it and seeing if it actually resonates with me and i'm sure it will because that that few that focus on story and all that kind of stuff is always a plus for me especially if it's yeah. done very well and i mean after playing xenoblade chronicles all That's of true. those I'm, i know that the stories of those games do hit home with me so i'm just looking forward to seeing what else what else they had yeah, and the characters are really popular. Like Cosmos is still very, very popular mm. here. I haven't played them either, but um, I, I know about yeah. the popularity of the characters and, and the figures and whatnot. So, yeah, no, that that's totally right. And in terms of yeah. like, if you could only play RPGs on one console, on one console, which console would you choose, and which of the five games are the deciding factor as to why you choose that console? 
I mean, like for me, it's it, it's not it's not even a console. It's PC. It's always PC because of the PC, performance. Yeah. PC because it it, okay. it generally it generally gets most of, like yeah sure you get exclusives on different consoles and stuff like that. Mm. Um, you do, um, but PC generally does get them eventually. And the thing is with PC is that you can mm. always improve it. You can always beef it up if you need to. With a console, it's basically stuck as it is unless you like I don't know jailbreak it or something along those lines yeah you get what you pay for whereas with a pc <laughs> you can continually improve it and um i mean there's not really any game that stands out to me it's more just the light like the wide library of games that a pc has compared to others over Huge time library. and stuff like that yeah. and you know if the worst does come oh. to the worst and you can't if the worst comes to the worst and it doesn't if and it's not actually on pc you can still emulate it if you really need to obviously buy the game to support <laughs> the developer but you yeah you know but you could still emulate it and um you know that that sure. works i mean i did that with radiant historia so you know and, it, and you can okay. probably get a, you can get a bit more performance out of it as well that's that's what matters and whatnot i mean i'm doing it with astral chain as well i bought the game got the hardware but i want to play it on something that's a bit more beefy than the little 720p handheld sure. And um, yeah, that works really well as well. So makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. And actually, I think you might be um, you might have similar taste to what I have because some of the games which have massively gone under the radar, and I know they've been covered in previous videos and collabs as well. So things like Eternal Sonata, and mm. then even on the PlayStation, things like Radiator Stories and other ones that have gone mm. under the radar, they really kind of round up the kind of RPG repertoire because you've got the hardcore knowledge of you know Final Fantasies and Chrono Triggers or whatever, mm. but Tell me about Eternal Sonata. What? Why did you like it so much? You know, why did it really resonate with you? Because that's a really unique game, isn't it? Yeah, it is unique. I mean, at that point, um, I, I only had I had a three sixty. Um, I bought a three sixty at that mm. point in time, and uh, I bought it initially because I wanted to play you know shooters and all that kind of stuff. And eventually, yeah. I found out you know these aren't for me at all. Um, these aren't these aren't for me. I'll find something <laughs> else to play. And uh, I was looking around, and I was basically looking at GameSpot. Um, GameSpot was basically my um, my repository of all knowledge at that point in time in terms of what I played. And uh, one mm. that I saw come up was Eternal Sonata, and I saw the I saw the artwork, and I was like, okay, that artwork looks really nice. I, I was drawn in initially by that. Then I saw a few trailers, I saw the ratings, and all this kind of stuff. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll buy it. You know, we'll go with that. So um, bought it that day, got it like i think four days later or something i don't think they had one day delivery at that point and um yeah i played it and i was just hooked i, I loved everything about it there was something that just hooked me from the get-go like i say that the art style straight away was massive yeah. the combat was great the music was amazing the premise was great yes. the world was magical like it actually felt like you were immersed in another story and in um that, I, I love the character mm. I, I love i love the characters as well how they were kind of um inspired by instruments because the, their names are like you know jazz yeah. beats viola polka yeah. allegretto, allegretto like all, all these yeah all these kind of names that were inspired by um by music and it, it's just great and i i i really do want to see that get some sort of remaster or remake i don't i think it was bandai namco who did it or who published it mm. i i don't know if it'll ever come back but if it does i'll be i'll be buying it immediately because it's such right it's such an it. under it's such an underrated game it's so it underrated and um you know i will always hold a special place for it yeah there's some weird dialogue here and there like there's a famous there's an infamous scene <laughs> in there where the dialogue is absolutely horrendous but uh, i don't care i don't care i i love i'd say about 95 percent of that game i was hooked on it's heartwarming. It's a heartwarming game. I mean, there are a few references. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, I still cannot get over the glowing of go-go's and how many times they talk yeah. about glowing of go-go's. Yeah, you know? that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, do you remember who your your party was? Who was your main party? Um, I think it was Jazz, Falsetto, and hmm. I think it was Allegretto. I think it was Allegretto. Like, um, Polka was pretty good as well. Beat I never used. Uh, viola i used for no, a while um and then there was was there clavace as well but clavace basically disappeared like quite early in the game yeah. oh yeah yeah the one that uh spoilers the one that betrays uh your that's it yeah oh yeah that's that? yeah that's that's it yeah clavace was the one who betrayed wasn't it and then she dies and then yeah, yeah that was it pretty much wasn't it yeah um yeah. i yeah i went with and, um, um wasn't it yeah there's two there's two other characters that were exclusive were they on xbox one or not the, the knight and the the female knight. The knight. 
I don't remember so those at like, all. Yeah. I don't remember those at all. I mean, like I, like I say, I had the free, yeah. I had the three sixty version. There was a PS three version as well, um, but I don't yeah, know yeah. if that's. I don't know if the PS three version had exclusive characters or if it was DLC or something along those lines. Yeah, so there's two two night characters. I seem I remember like for only one of the the versions that was available. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's like uh, armored armored girl and and something else. Um, it might have been only a PlayStation exclusive. They're part of the story, but you can only play them in um, in one of the versions. Um, I completely right. typed in the wrong game. I've typed in Radio right Stories. I'm talking Radio right Stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that would have helped. Yeah, because you're naming all these people, and I I got a visual of them, but I can't remember exactly the. Claves and Crescendo, Viola, Serenade, Salsa. S Salsa, I don't, I don't remember them being, um, I don't remember those ones being playable characters. We did forget Chopin. Chopin is a playable character as well. Oh, Chopin, oh my him. goodness. Chopin. Yeah, I, I can't believe I forgot, I can't believe yeah. forgot about him. Um, but uh, I yeah, I don't remember any others. I don't remember any others. Oh, like Crescendo, Salsa Crescendo is, is one of the ones. Crescendo doesn't, yeah, Crescendo doesn't actually ring a bell at all. I don't think I've ever seen her before, or him, I have no idea. But, um, I mean, with Crescendo, yeah, I imagine the name, I imagine it's, it's a female character. Let me see. It's been so long. Yeah, Crescendo is one of the knights. He definitely looks like one of the knights' um, characters, which means he must have been one of the ones. So I, I think it must be Crescendo and Serenade. Crescendo Let's is see. this kind of prince. Cres so Crescendo, guy. so... Shinna and the Dead Prince of the Kingdom of Baroque, okay. I don't know. So, while Crescendo appears in both the 360 and PS3 version, he and Serenade are only playable in the PS3 version. Yeah. There you go. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's cool. I do vaguely remember, but no, like, yeah, they were never playable in the 360 version. So, yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, I, le I learned something new there. <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I always like having more characters to work with and stuff like that. But then again, I mean, I think in Eternal Sonata, you only got a maximum of three characters in a party anyway. So, right. maybe, party. like, maybe it might, might have been bloating it out a little bit more than it needed to be. Who knows? But, mm. yeah, I mean, that, that game deserves something. It, it needs something to come back out. The same as Lost Odyssey as well. Lost Odyssey is basically stuck on. Yeah the 360 for perpetuity i don't think we're ever going to see that <laughs> remastered or anything like that either but yeah that that needs something too it's true it's true and like i don't know if you've ever played skies of arcadia did you ever play skies of arcadia i, I had a dreamcast but i never played skies of arcadia um my my step oh. my stepdad um my stepdad had the um he, he bought me a dreamcast and he basically like he, he was big mm. on the whole um he was big on computers and all this kind of stuff like well before yeah. like pirating was a thing and stuff like that i probably shouldn't mm. say it but he he would he pirated a lot of games for the dreamcast um and basically i had a massive library of games to play but skies of arcadia wasn't one of them um and then obviously it came out on the gamecube after that didn't it and i had a gamecube yes. but i never got it either because yeah. i didn't really i wasn't big on rpgs at that point i didn't have my rpg awakening until my yeah. mid-teens which was with eternal sonata so um no that's oh, another one on the list that i need to play but if i were to play a version it would probably be the gamecube version just because of the improvements they made with that version yeah and more content yeah yeah that, that's mm. that's one that i think you've really got to play there's there's rumors that it's being is being remade it's being remade yeah. and released um and that will be a big one as well a really popular one because still to this day i don't think that concept has ever been covered in any other rpg so the concept that you're mm. a sky pirate and yeah. you've got a ship and you've got an open world that you explore but even beyond that there's a limiter as to how high your ship can go and how low your ship can go mm. and halfway through the game a little bit spoilers but something happens and then you can go higher than you ever imagined yeah. and lower than you ever imagined it's like 50 percent mm. more world that you didn't even know yeah it's just there above and beyond yeah. Yeah, amazing. No, that's great. That's crazy. I know. I've I've heard about that. I've I've heard about that. I've heard that people like I I do like listen like well jump in the forums and stuff like that and see what people say about certain games. I do know about that. I did like see a little excerpt from someone saying like oh yeah, 
you know, they need to do, someone needs to do something along the lines of what Skies of Arcadia did, where basically, you know, you don't really change the dynamic of what you're doing. All you're doing is just adding a little bit more to that core mechanic, and then it just somehow opens up more and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, that that would be great. I mean, like that, like that's that kind of sense of adventure that I feel you don't really, you, you do get in quite a lot of RPGs and stuff like that, but it's really hard to to emulate to that level. And um, yeah, I've, I I am looking forward to playing it in the future and stuff like that. I mean, my retro list is always growing with games that I'll be playing, so uh, that'll be another one to check out. That'll be cool. That'll be cool for sure. And in terms of kind of forums as well, how how much do you get involved with the kind of discussion and theory crafting and debates and all that kind of stuff? Do you get your hands dirty with that? Not at all. Um, I I I watch <laughs> like uh, I, I I read theory crafting and all that, but I never get involved in it because like. You know, I don't really like arguing about that kind of stuff because there will always be people who will mm. be hard-headed about it and they'll be like, no, no, it would definitely be this because blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 and it would just drive me insane. I know mm. it would. So I just read it. I I feel, I, I gotta say, I, I try to come to my own judgment on what's what's happening based on what people say. And that's that's as far as I go. But I'll never really get involved in the actual discussion of it. I, I'll never I, like the the, fur, sure. the furthest I'll go is I'll express my opinions on something, but I won't ever debate it because I'll I'll be there forever, and I've got a heck of a lot of other things I'd rather be doing than debating with someone Better halfway things, across the world. Yeah. So absolutely, yeah, it makes sense to me. What what's the wildest what's the wildest theory that you've ever come across or wildest kind of allegation or theory craft or rumour or <laughs> Um Honestly, I don't really know. I mean, the Trails series has a ton of them because, I mean, like, it's so shrouded in mystery still when people get really deep on the lore there. There are people there who know, who, who literally know the quotes right down to the point in the oh, game it happens. They've played, it's crazy how much they know mm -hmm. and how much they remember. I mean, I don't know how they managed to do it. I've played the games quite a lot myself, but, um, God, it's, it's a tough one, really. I mean, like, I, I don't really have anything that comes to mind or anything like that. I think, I think the only thing that comes that really took me took me aback, um, and it's not even an RPG. It's um, it's Zelda. Um, was when I okay. first heard about the whole um, structure of Majora's Mask and how it's actually that Link is dead and then he's going through the five stages of grief or something like that. And I was like, yeah. oh yeah, that actually that actually makes that actually makes quite a lot of sense because yeah, in Clock Town there's there's the denial in the in the swamp there's the anger in the yeah. uh, goron mountains there's the depre there's the bargaining in the uh, uh -huh. valley in the um, what yeah in in the zora domain there's the depression and then in the valley of death or something there's the acceptance um and mm. the idea is that uh link <clears throat> when he went into the lost woods without his fairy or something like that he um what was it like he got lost in the woods and, and eventually became a um a stalfos because that's what happens to you if you end up in the lost woods and he's going through kind of his final adventure in majora's mask and then he's basically mm. accepting his death and then he reappears in twilight princess as uh, uh in twilight princess as the stalfos that's um that uh trains the new link from twilight princess um and and i was like yeah that kind of makes sense and then then you find out more about his character because he says something like in twilight princess he says something along the lines of i was never remembered as a hero or something along those lines because it's true he was never remembered as a hero because yeah. in ocarina of time he was pulled out of the timeline of ocarina of time and put into a completely new one where ocarina of time mm. never happened so technically his hero status was never remembered so i think it's Amazing, i think it was really really cool i love hearing like this like that kind of stuff you know the lore that goes into those kind of games and how it all kind of connects yeah. um the same with um stuff like a souls game like dark souls or all that kind of stuff or bloodborne you know stuff with very um stuff with very how can i say not not hidden lore but law that isn't really given to you. I found that one that was very recent sure. in that regard was Octopath Traveler 2. Octopath Traveler 2 had amazing story, like amazing lore. And if you actually like really look into it and see the tiny details, you, you would find out more than you ever would 
um you know they would tell you enough yeah yeah Yeah, they they would give you maybe about 50 percent of the story but then 50 percent of the rest of it was like hidden under um notes and connecting the dots and connecting the events and all that kind of stuff and that's that's great storytelling to me if it's done right and uh yeah octopath 2 did it really well yeah that's it that's it like in both both kind of cases there one of them was internet forum you've played final fantasy 8 right Final Fantasy VIII, I haven't, no, but like obviously Final Fantasy VIII was a big was a big one, wasn't it? The whole thing with um uh was is is it Squall or something like that? Is 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 the main character's name is Squall. Squall's and, the main uh, character. Yeah. Squall's the main character yeah. and something like he's already dead or something along those lines, or that opening cutscene he was actually already dead or something along those lines. Yeah, they've done they've done that as well, and also the main heroine in that one, Renoa, um, yeah. not really spoilers because it's theory crafting, but Basically, because of Squall's death or anything like that, she's gone through the kind of timelines and time compression, and she's actually the ultimate evil sort of Ultimessia from the future because she has the magical power within her, and she's gone through time through her depression and became her to come back to stop herself from falling in love with Squall or whatever, so that you know she doesn't have to go through his death and all this kind of stuff. It's really, <laughs> really convoluted, but uh, in a way, with all the abilities and whatnot, that kind of makes sense. That's the kind of theory crafting thing on on the forums that is always really fascinating, but one that I really like is um in the Genzo Sukuden series mm. there's loads of like tidbits that really are thrown in not just to explain backstory but also to deceive you and to throw you off the trail like mm. in Sukuden Ron if you look at a gravestone and bring a certain character called Clive he reads it and says it's by Elsa a girl he's chasing mm. sorry Clive I couldn't die by your hands and he knows yeah. straight away that's bo- that's, yes, that's not right. She's mm. not dead. She just deceived me. She's on the run still. And then later yeah. on, when you go through the whole story, you realize that, you know, she is cunning. She is conniving. She can throw you off the trail. And then all these little mm. old books and laws and everything like that you read about the past, you just see the character and you don't know anything about them. But then you open these little law items and books. And it says like a hundred years ago, this ultimate magician fought this ultimate magician. And that's why there's a massive hole in the continent because of their battle mm. and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't read those little, you know, uh, backstory and tidbits within the game mm. itself, you don't know. You just think, oh, that guy looks cool. He does magic. Well done. <laughs> but you, yeah. know, you can you can find out about them just by reading those little um, items and those hidden quests and whatnot. And that's what I really like. It kind of enriches the world, enriches the experience. Oh, I didn't know that. That's really cool. That kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, like there was, uh, th- like I say, I mean, um, there's some great examples there. I mean, like I say, Trails does it all the time. There are people theory crafting about that. Like, there's one which is like it's it's a strange one, really. I mean, like I'm going to say spoilers now because people don't like being spo- spoiled on Trails. So I'm going to say spoiler alert right now. Um, so basically, there's there's a game like the, 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 the Trail series at the moment is composed of what twelve games, twelve mainline games, and mm. then there's um, there's another one which is coming out in full called Nyata Boundless Trails, and it's completely different from any of the Trails games. It, it, the only similarity really is that it has Trails in the name. But some people theory craft that it is part of the main universe, it's just not in it at the moment, and it's just going to be revealed at a later okay. point. And one big connection that people are making is one of the characters is um i think her her name is Kraya or something like that um i've only played night or once one of the characters literally has it's pretty much the same outfit as this big oh. grandmaster like the grandmaster of ouroboros like the grandmaster of ouroboros appears in the end of cold steel 4 and basically the two yeah. characters have very like it's it's uncanny how similar they look in terms of outfit in terms of look and some people are thinking is this the is this the grand master but from another point in time as has she now uh, you know is is there some sort of connection there and it, it's really cool it's really cool because i'm 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 kind of invested in that i do think naito is i do think that game is connected to the series in some way I do think it is, and I think it's a bit because sure. I think I also think it's a bit weird that Falcom decided to say to NIS America, "Oh yeah, you get get Nyata done as well," um, you know, because we want this one because it, it just seemed a bit weird if it's not connected in any way. So I think it is connected. Yeah. It will be revealed in the future when we get a bit more um, information given to us about you know the whole the whole plan that they've got going on and all this kind of stuff because this has been sure. going on for twelve games now. It might be another four or five yet. But yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all kind of comes together. So, yeah, that that kind of stuff is great. It's great to see how it all goes. And if you if you're right, then great. You know, you knew it well beforehand. If you didn't know it, then 
whatever i guess you go from yeah, you go from yeah. there but i mean you know it's not just that trails there's so many other characters that are just like kind of shrouded in mystery and all this kind of stuff um there, there's another one who's like a blind journalist nielsen who people think mm. is like one of the like i wouldn't say a big bad because like the the society of ouroboros isn't really evil per se i think we've pretty much seen that they just mm. kind of have their own plan for the future and then this this guy nielsen kind of knows too much and people are saying oh he's actually something complete he's actually part of ouroboros he must be like an anguish or something like that one of their head honcho anguish who we don't know about yeah it's it's really cool it's really cool to know about it like i said i won't get involved in it and i won't really argue it but i will read mm. about it and it's like you say it is fascinating to listen about that's that's one of the main points of being like an RPG fan, especially JRPG fan, is that when you're immersed in a world and you know, that series is popular and it's continuing and there will be further installments of it, there's going to be a big payoff. It's either going to yeah. be what you expect and what people have theorycrafted, or it's going to be a twist or something unexpected yeah. and new characters be introduced. It's just like, you know, it kind of gets you through life really you do what you do day in day out and then when you get that announcement it just brightens up your day brightens up your week your month and everything mm. like that and you're like yes it's coming we're gonna yeah. find out and then when it does come out you're immersed in it you're playing with it you absolutely marathon it and then like mm. oh that was i guess that's the same as the novels right people were so involved in the harry potter novels and whatnot mm. they just wanting that payoff and what you know the kind of food crafting stuff to be kind of fulfilled and the prophecies and all this kind of stuff I think mm. that's that's what you need in life. Everyone needs something to look forward to, right? <laughs> yeah, you always you always need something to look forward to. One hundred percent. I mean, like you know, what it'll be it'll be boring otherwise and whatnot. But um, yeah, God, we've had yeah yeah like um obviously the un the universe and harry potter and like they're getting that rebooted and stuff like that now aren't they like going off on a little tangent actually with harry potter there was it was <laughs> have you uh, you know that ai is going crazy lately um and they're um doing you know they're taking ai and basically using it for you know different events there's people who are literally taking sure. ai taking the characters from harry potter but then putting in prompts of um you know jack like jacked up harry potter characters or something like that so it's literally <laughs> just like yeah. like um harry and malfoy but like as bodybuilders and it's absolutely ridiculous yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous but I, I find it hilarious i do i do find it really really funny to, to just have funny. a look at <laughs> but um I, I think That's it's like Harry, like harry spotter the boy who lifted or something along those lines it's it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i love these kind of spoofs and these kind of um uh, little little kind of sidewinds of, of the character as well like um when um, my little daughter was and, and my son as well was um dressing up in kind of magician stuff we called him like mm. harry potter because he's a little bit chubby yeah. as well <laughs> 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 and that kind of thing yeah no always always good fun so in terms of kind of like future plans and, and, and directions for the channel is there any like major thing major project that you wanted to do for a long time that uh, you will eventually get around to doing is kind of any big kind of project long-term thing that you're investing a lot of research and time into or is that going to be sometime in the future for now it's more more of the same and you know keep the momentum going and keeping the content going and uh you know giving the fans what they want uh yeah i mean the main thing was um the, the, the main thing that I added on this year was the retro series which i'm basically doing and to be honest i'll, I'll just be sticking with what i'm doing at, at, at the present time i'll just do what i need uh, do what i need to do do what i want to do um there's not really anything that's mm. sticking out to me in terms of what i want to add to the to the um to, to the channel i'm happy with how it's going i'm happy with what i'm doing and i'll just keep on doing it that way there's not really anything there that stands out to me in terms of what i want to um to add to it and to be, to be honest i'm mindful that i don't really want to add too much to it because if i keep adding too much then maybe sure. not then nothing gets done so i prefer to stick yeah. with uh I prefer to stick with what I've got for now and then go from there. And like I say, I mean, it, it's it's going well. It's working out well at the moment. It's doing what it needs to do. I'm just happy mm. to be back actually making videos as opposed to having all those troubles from last year. So, Oh, yeah. Indeed, indeed. A year to forget in terms yeah. of technical issues and technical difficulties. So, no, I, I feel for yeah. you there, but I'm glad you're over the, over the worst of it now. Yeah, fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. No. Upwards and onwards, you know, 2023, you've got a trip to Japan planned. Uh, September, you'll be you'll be popping down here. I'll create a goodie bag for you, an RPG filled to the brim, so you can take that home <laughs> with you when uh, when you make your way down here. And uh, apart from that, what else are you most looking forward to when you when you arrive in Japan? Uh, well, I was gonna, actually going to ask you, because, like, uh, I was going to ask you one thing, because uh, one of the things that uh, I'm 
uh, I wanted to get. They've they've done like a, a Cold mm. Steel anniversary um, wine bottle, but I can't actually get it sent via a proxy because you need an alcohol license to do it. So I was thinking like, okay, I right, if I if I buy it, <laughs> have it with you guys, and I'll pick it yeah. up when I arrive or something like that, and I'll take it with me, and then kind of you know jam it into my suitcase or something on the way back, so yeah, they can't man. see it or whatnot. I might I might think about that, but um, yeah, I'll definitely looking forward to come down. I I'm trying to think of like how I'm gonna do it because I, I imagine I'm gonna have to fly down to to is there is there an airport near Miyazaki? I don't even know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So Miyazaki Airport is actually where my parents, because my parents and two little brothers came over last week, actually, and yeah. um, stayed with us for, for eight days. So Miyazaki has an airport, um, which is about one and a half hours from Tokyo. So quite, quite convenient. Yeah. And then from Miyazaki Airport to our place is only a good 25 minutes, 30 minutes. So relatively nearby. And you've got the beach in between Aoshima Beach, which is absolutely stunning. Um, lots of things to do in and around there as well. So what I'd probably propose is uh, either spend time in Tokyo first or you can come to down to Miyazaki first. So straight from Tokyo down to Miyazaki, one and a half hours, stay in and around, you know, the beautiful kind of hot spots, maybe even Sheraton. Sheraton Hotel is stunning, mm. world-class resort. Amazing, right? Mm. And then we'll hit all the hot spots. We'll eat good food, have a laugh for, you know, a day or two or however long you, you want to stay. Mm. And then, yeah, I can drop you back off at the airport and then you can make, you can either go to the airport or there's, I don't know how much of Kyushu, the bottom island, you want to explore, but there's actually mm. a bus, a, a bus that goes from Miyazaki all the way up to Fukuoka, which is the top of Kyushu, the kind of capital. Lots and lots of stuff to do in Fukuoka as well. So I don't know if you want to spend any time there or just in and around, you know, the main spots, Kyoto, Osaka, maybe even Hokkaido. So it's up to you what your agenda and itinerary is. But whenever you come down here, I'll make sure you have a good time. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, like the the idea that I was going for is that I was going to spend like I was going to fly into Tokyo for maybe about two days or something mm. like that. Just have a little look around, go to yeah. obviously Akihabara and all that kind of stuff. Look around, sure. um, go to Tachikawa and all that where the Falcon Head office is. Yeah, yeah. Just have a look around that area. And then after two days, I would take I, I was basically thinking, OK, just use the bullet train or something along those lines. And oh, then, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd use the Shinkansen to go around and go down to Miyazaki afterwards. Um, see you guys for like two, two, three days, however long it is, and then I'll basically take the bullet yeah, train right up to to um, Hakodate, and then Hakodate to Sapporo, and then mm -hmm. kind of all the way back down. But then I'll need, I, I don't know how the JR rail passes work now in Japan and what what the idea behind them and stuff like that is. But I mean, my like, I'd like to be spending about a week in Sapporo, well, not a week in Sapporo, but a week in yeah. Hokkaido because Hokkaido <laughs> is my favourite place in sure. Japan. Uh, in terms of what it is and I'll, I'll be renting out a bike to basically tour around like i said before um that's the idea for me um go to onsens and hot spring resorts and all that i'm just, I'm just looking forward to it. i know i'm going to be spending a heck of a lot of money but i don't really care to be honest it's gonna be super enjoyable and uh yeah it'll be cool to see you as well and uh see what uh, miyazaki is all about and you know I'll, i guess i'll just have to work around the logistics um when I'm about two months away or something like that and figure out how I'm going to do it. I mean, like I say, I mean, if if it's anything like it used to be, I can use a JR rail pass for 14 days, I think. I can get it for like, I can get like mm. a 14 day JR rail pass, which allows me to use anything I want yeah. for like 40,000 yen yes. or something stupid like that. I don't know what it is, but... I think so. Um, Sounds about right. Yeah, and if the worst comes to the worst, I'll just have to buy a plane, I'll just have to buy a plane ticket and then there's new chitose airport which is all the way up in sapporo anyway and then go from there but hopefully it can be the shinkansen because i've never been on a bullet train before so it'll be nice to try that out you, you'll you'll love it you'll love the shinkansen it's so spacious it's really clean it is a real experience like my, my little one he's only three years old right but he knows every single shinkansen every single track and line so he can he can be the tall guy he's only three years old but he knows all of the shinkansen x to y to z wherever it goes the Do hayabusa dr yellow alpha alpha x all this kind of stuff and there's actually some um, places in Japan that I'm thinking of going to as well. So when you do set your agenda, when you know your dates, right, perhaps we can even tick some of the um, collab stuff off the bucket list because there's a place called Nagashima Spa Land, which is a mm. theme park with on a purpose-built island that's based as an onsen, a hot spring. So there's even like a bath roller coaster and that kind of stuff, oh, which man, is that's... like amazing. You know, you that, never... that sounds cool. <laughs> that sounds cool. I'd have to, I'd have to have a look at that, to be honest. I mean, like, um, yeah, I, I, de I definitely would be down for that. I'll have to have a look. Like, like I say, I mean, like, it's, it's a shame because I'll only have about two weeks to, to use. 
um but uh you know that that first week can just be like i say going around i mean even even if it comes to i can spend maybe one day in tokyo because I, i'll be honest i don't care much for tokyo anyway it's too big i've said it before <laughs> um i'd much rather go outside of tokyo and have a look at other places and whatnot and the real yeah, japan i mean yeah. yeah i will um obviously we'll keep in touch about it and we'll discuss what uh, what the plan is and go from there yeah sounds good to me mate that no, sounds totally good to me really looking forward to it as i said right something to look forward to you need something to look forward to in september it's going to be an absolute blast so yeah no can't wait um definitely get your tickets get your dates involved get your annual leave in and then yeah let's sort it out <laughs> yeah i mean well the annual leave is already done uh the annual leave is ready to oh, go yeah. um i've uh i, I cool. had to book it well in advance because like work yeah. is like that now they they say like no you need to get it done well in advance now but exactly. i think mm -hmm. um from I am off, like I've booked it off from the 4th to the 15th of September. Oh, so cool. basically like um, Friday the 1st of September will be my last day and I hope to fly out on Saturday the 2nd and yeah. then probably come back mm -hmm. on say maybe the 17th or something like that. I'll have Sunday and Monday to basically recover and then back to work on the Tuesday and then that's pretty much it. And then hopefully I'll make that like a yearly thing where I'll just go, well, every year. But um, yeah, that's yeah, that's man, yeah, my man. that's my window where I'm coming down, and that's that's 100% set in stone. I don't really um, like I say, even though I haven't got the tickets yet, it will definitely be happening. So it's just a case of figuring sure, out, like sure. you know, how the plan's going to go and whatnot. But like I say, I will talk to you about that and we'll go from there yeah yeah and, and from next year onwards as well our house should be ready in miyazaki so when you want to, mm. to bunk over you know you save some suitcase space uh, save some accommodation costs just come to my place and uh yeah treat you to a good time every year september <laughs> yeah i look forward to it mate i look forward to it yeah thank you very much cool cool no absolute pleasure catching up i know i know you're busy <laughs> man you know when schedules and, and time differences and all that kind of thing but you know it's always worthwhile talking talking good fun games mm. and, and casual banter especially with a fellow brit as well on our bank holiday of course <laughs> of course of course yeah exactly it's not it's nice to have fellow brits and stuff like that i mean uh, there's not many in the rpg space unfortunately like they're most it's mostly mm. all um from abroad from other you know walks of life which is great you know it's nice to uh, meet other people from all across the world but it there's there's a sense of homeliness when you're actually talking to someone who understands your banter and your and your and your comedic timing because we in the uk have a, a different sense of humor compared to a lot of other people so that british sarcasm yeah yeah, yeah no i hear you, i hear you and especially because we're both fans of like japan stuff as well right you know it's just, yeah exactly it's just, yeah it's meant to be <laughs> exactly <laughs> good stuff man uh, dom thank you so much for your time absolute mm. pleasure as always and uh yeah keep it real keep safe and uh enjoying your content and we'll speak very soon yeah yeah thank you mate yeah i'll take it easy buddy and uh, i'll see you another time yeah nice one nice one have a good one speak soon take it have easy a good mate day. bye cheers buddy bye bye